morning, Mr. Stout. Good morning. I'm, I'm correct in understanding that T-Mobile has different ways of producing documents. Is that right? Sure. And so on direct examination, you were shown a number of different documents by Mr. Bomberg that were T-Mobile records. Yes. And let me just show you a document and ask you if that looks like another form of T-Mobile records. Yes, it is. And does this uh, cover the uh, records of T-Mobile for that same uh, telephone uh, that we were talking about on direct examination um, uh, for a longer, a wider time period? I would have to look at them. Does that go again on June 9th rather than uh, June 16th? This begin on June 9th, and they appear to go until June 20th. I offer these slides. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to offer pages 2 through 21, uh, and we'll redact the cover page in a similar fashion to the uh, subscriber information that was earlier redacted. So the first page of Exhibit 258 is the same subscriber information that doesn't have things like social security number uh, deleted uh, or redacted, correct? Yes, that's correct. And then there are uh, there's information about calls and texts on the remaining pages of the exhibit. Is that right? Yes. Now, Bigger is better. So this is page 10 of 21. You see that there are two calls involving that 89, or two texts involving that 8969 number that we were looking at before? Yes. And you can tell that there are texts because of the D next to the uh, number? Yes, that's correct. So in, in this form of your record, it doesn't have an SMS like the <coughs> other exhibit. This has a D to designate a text message, correct? Yes. And if it doesn't have a D by it, that means it's a phone call. Correct? Yes, yes. All right. So here we have on June 13 at 9.52 uh, a.m., and 9.53 a.m., 
uh, calls between the 3008 number, your customer, and the number 8969, correct? A text message. Text message. Yes. And then showing you page 11 of 21, you see that there's text message between the 3008 and the 8969 on June 13 at 326 in the uh, afternoon. Yes. And in this form of your record, is the text message in Pacific time or is it in the time zone where the phone was located? Uh, Pacific time. All right. So if this text message was at, uh, is listed as 1556, that would really be uh, six, I'm sorry, that would really be 626 in the evening or afternoon, correct? Yes. You'd add three hours if it's in the eastern zone? Yes. And then again, we've got text messages, two text messages <clears throat> between those same two phones um, <clears throat> listed as uh, 1745 and 1836, but we know that that is actually uh, 845 and uh, 936, correct? Eastern time? Yes. And again, we've got a um, text message on June 13. Well, I'm sorry, that's a phone call. June 13 at um, 9.44 p.m. to the same number, between the same numbers? Yes. Yes. All right. And then um, we've got a, uh, a phone call between the 3008 number and the 218-895-2094 number? Yes. At um, 10.17 p.m.? Yes. And, and in this form of your record, the time of the phone call is the actual time where the cell phone is? For, for this type of an account, yes. And so in this circumstance, uh, if this phone was in Massachusetts, it would be east. It would the phone call would be recorded as Eastern time. Yes. And then you've got another uh, text message between those two phones uh, on June 14 at 7:21 a.m. Is that right? It's listed as 4:21. So it'd be 7:21. But you yes. had three hours. Yes. And then again, we've got. A, uh, June 14, we've got a uh, call from the 3008 number to the, um, that 218 number we've been talking about. You see that? Where's that? I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to show you the call to the 218-895-2094 number. Oh, I, I got it off the screen. Can you see that? The 2094 number? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and again, on June 14 at 10 o'clock in the morning, we've got a 19-minute call to that 2094 number. Yes. <clears throat> and then we've got two text messages uh, between the 3008 number and the 8969 number, correct? Yes. And those would be at uh, 2.30 Eastern Time and 2.32 Eastern Time? Yes. And then we've got a, uh, a pair of calls on June 14 at 12.32 uh, p.m. and 12.41 p.m. to the, uh, two, uh, one of them to 2094 and one of them to 2095. See those? 
1231, yes. And then on June 14, we've got a uh, text message uh, at um, 11 uh, 23 uh, between the 3008 number and the 8969 number. Is that right? At um, 823. It's, the text is listed on your record as 8.23 Pacific time. Okay, but so it would be 11.23, yes. Eastern time zone, it would be 11.23? Yes. And again, we've got another text. <coughs> two minutes later, between the same two thumbs. Yes. And then we've got... Um, Three more texts just after midnight, Eastern Time, between those 3008 and the 8969. Well, you have two texts and looks like one a, call. a phone call, yes. All right. And then we've got a phone call at uh, 1009 between those two numbers? Yes, can't see it, Mr. Wright. Can't see it. Thank you. Right? At 1009, yes. <clears throat> okay. And then we've got uh, three phone calls. This is on June 15, is that right? June 15th, yes. Three phone calls uh, at uh, 1220, 1222, and 1232 a.m. Is that right? Yes. <clears throat> and now going on to June 16, we've got a series of uh, six phone calls from the 3008 number to the uh, 218-895-2094 number, is that right? Yes. And those uh, begin at uh, 6.07 in the morning and end at 7.05 in the morning? <coughs> yes. Then on June 16, we've got an, a call from uh, the uh, 8969 number to the 3008 number at 11.22 in the morning. Is that right? Can't see it. Can't see it. To the 8969 number at 11.22, yes. Okay. That's an yeah, incoming call from that number. And you know it's an incoming call because that middle column indicates either incoming or if it's not, if it's an outgoing, it will just list the uh, a destination. A destination. Yes. And then we've got another incoming call at 1.24 in the afternoon from the 8969 number to the 3008 number. Yes. And 12 minutes later, another incoming call. Yes. <laughs> and then here we've got a, this is June 16 at uh, 621, is that right, in the afternoon? Yes. And that's a um, a call from the 308 phone to a phone that has a number 860-518-9171, is that right? Yes, that's correct. And then the next call is uh, 10 minutes later uh, 
from the 3008 number to that uh, 2094 number we've been looking at, correct? Yes. And then uh, we've got a, uh, a call three minutes later uh, from the 869 number, I'm sorry, 8969 number to the 3008 number. Is that right? That's a text? That's incoming text message, yes. Yeah. And, and that actually would not be three minutes later. That would be three hours and three minutes later, correct? Right, yes. All right. And so that's a series of text messages uh, that take place um, about 9.30 in the evening? Approximately, yes. And then we've got uh, at 6.42 in the afternoon on June 16, we've got another call from your customer 3008 to the 2094 number, correct? Yes. And then on, again on the 16th, we've got a uh, a text message at 10 o'clock uh, between the 3008 and the 8969, is that right? 10 o'clock uh, Boston time. At 10 o'clock? Uh, it says 1900 on your Seven, record. 10, that yes, that would be correct. Time. Yeah, that would be correct, yes. So it would be 10 o'clock Boston yep. time? And then you've got a, um, an incoming text from uh, 8969 to 3008 at 10.13 uh, uh, p.m.? Yes. And then we've got a, uh, a text from your customer to the 8969 number at um, 1222 Eastern Time. Is that right? Yes. And we've got a uh, phone call from your customer to this uh, number, 860-518-9171 at um, uh, 9.29 p.m. Is that right? That's correct. That last nine minutes. Did you see that number of minutes in the right-hand column? Yes. All right. And then you've got two calls at 11.24 and again at 11.46 to that 2094 number. Yes. From your customer. Correct. One calls 22 minutes and one calls 77 minutes? Yes. <clears throat> and then we've got a <clears throat> series of uh, text messages, um, correct? Yes. And again, say at uh, 1250, uh, there's a call uh, between the 89 Six nine number and the three zero zero eight number. Is that correct? Yes. <clears throat> and a uh, another call uh, at one o three a.m. Is that right? Yes. And there are a variety of other calls that are uh, reflected on this record. Is that right? I'm sorry. There are a variety of other calls that are reflected right in this time period. Is that right? It appeared to be, yes. So you right after that uh, 103 a.m. call with 8969, you've got a seven-minute call with a number that's 617-905-7080. Is that right? Yes. And you've got a one-minute call with 857-209-1008. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you've got a two-minute call with uh, that same 7080 number, correct? Yes. That's at 110 in the morning, correct? Yes. 
and then a, another one minute call at 118 in the morning to that 1008 number? Yes, that's correct. And then another call at 1.21 a.m. to that 1008 number, correct? Yes. What does this entry signify, sir? Those are, that's an IP address. Okay. Does that indicate that the person accessed some data? It, it could be. It, 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 it could be a, a variety of different things. All I can tell you, it's uh, that, that uh, phone went through an IP address at that time. Okay. Those are all questions I have. Thank you. Your Honor, I've got my sticky label on here. We'll peel those off the board. asking about an IP address? Yes. And when you describe the data in that uh, record that includes the uh, cell site information, this is what you're talking about, correct? This yes. This is data, correct? Yes, some type of data, yes. It, meaning you can't tell um, whether the phone, the user of the phone was doing anything affirmatively to make that connection or if it was just something running in the background that caused the phone to connect to the cell site, correct? Correct. I'll, yeah, all I can tell you is that it was on that IP address at that time the, uh, the phone was. And this call here that uh, Mr. Rankin asked you about, on this particular exhibit, 258, the very last outgoing call, correct? Yes. June 17th. 2013 at 1.21 a.m. last voice um, call made by your subscriber 3008. Correct? I would have to look at the rest of the records okay. to you, see that. That's but I, fair enough. Yeah. I uh, apologize. Let me just show you. That's on page 20. And it goes to page 21. That would be correct, yes. this entry appears above that because it's in Pacific time. You see that um, text message described there just above the ruler? Yes. And that text message is to that number that we looked at the um, <clears throat> in the call data record and in the uh, cell site uh, record with the locations, correct? Yes. Same number, <coughs> H341, correct? Yes, that's correct. And that uh, text message went from Mr. Lloyd's phone to that A341 number at 3.23 in the morning on June 17, 2013, correct? Yeah, here it's listed uh, at, um, 23 minutes after midnight, but then you'd have to add the three hours for the East Coast, and that would be 3.23 a.m., yes. And that's the last time there's any outgoing activity from Mr. Lloyd's phone to the T-Mobile network. True. I believe so, yes. Nothing further, Your Honor. Nothing further, Your
We call our next witness, Your Honor, Glaucia de Santos, please. Thank you, Ron. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. I'm just going to ask you to keep your voice up so we can all hear you. Okay. Would you state your full name, please? Could you spell your first name? G-L-A-U-C-I-A. -A. And your last name, ma'am? Santos. Santos. And I'm sorry, could you spell that just for our record? Thank you. S-A-N-T-O-S. S-A-N-T-O-S. How old are you? Que idade tem? 30 anos. 30. And where are you originally from? E de onde vem, originalmente? Brazil. Brazil. When did you come to this country? Quando foi que chegou nesse país? 25 de março de 2013. March 25th, 2013. And when you came to this country, did you um, um, study? Quando você chegou neste país, você estudou? A princípio, não. Depois de alguns meses, sim. At first, no. But after some months, yes. Okay. And while you were studying, did you also um, work? E enquanto você estava estudando, também trabalhava? Não, a princípio eu cheguei trabalhando e só após eu comecei a estudar. No, at first I arrived and I was working and then I started studying. Okay. And when you were working, um, what type of work were you doing? Quando trabalhava, que tipo de trabalho eu estava fazendo? A princípio eu trabalhei numa padaria e após eu trabalhei limpando casa. At first I worked at a bakery and then I worked cleaning houses. And when you were working at the bakery, um, was there a reason uh, you took on another job, cleaning homes? E quando você estava trabalhando na padaria, houve um outro motivo pelo qual você começava a limpar a casa? Não entendi essa pergunta. I didn't understand your question. Sure. At some point, uh, while you were working at the bakery, were you looking to uh, ha uh, have another job so you could earn money for school? Em algum momento, quando eu estava trabalhando na pararia, você queria ganhar mais dinheiro para, para estudar, então procurar, queria procurar outro emprego? Sim. Yes. Okay. And how um, the the work that you did cleaning houses? Tell us how you began to clean houses. E o trabalho que você fazia limpando casas? Nos conte como é que você conseguiu este emprego? Este emprego eu consegui. Um... Na padaria, através de uma cliente, eu informei que eu estava procurando um outro trabalho de house clean e ela me indicou uma pessoa que estava procurando um, alguém para ajudar, que foi a Graziele. I, while I was working at the bakery, 
I let it be known that I was looking and a client mentioned that she knew somebody who was looking for help and she put me in touch with uh, Gracieli. And uh, Grazielli, uh, did you, at some point, did you meet Grazielli? In alguma altura você conhecia a Grazielli? No. Okay. No. Did, did you have a, a phone call with Grazielli? Você teve um telefonema com ela? Sim. E, yes. A cliente me passou o telefone da Grazielli e nós conversamos primeiramente por telefone. Yes, the client gave me Grazielli's telephone number and we had a conversation over the phone. As a result of that phone conversation, did you begin to work doing uh, house cleaning for Grazi? Como resultado da tela conversa por telefone, você começou a trabalhar por pela Grazielli? Sim. Yes. Okay. And approximately when did you begin to work for Grazielli? E aproximadamente quando foi que você começou a trabalhar para Grazielli? Em junho. Em junho. Do you recall that being June of 2013? Sim, junho de 2013. Yes, June of 2013. Do you, uh, did you ever clean a, a home in North Attleboro, Você Massachusetts? Limpou alguma vez uma casa de North Attleboro in Massachusetts? Sim. Yes. And whose house was that? E de quem era a casa? Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez. And uh, Aaron Hernandez, do you see him in court in the courtroom today? E Aaron Hernandez, você enxerga ele aqui na sala hoje? Sim. Yes. Can you just point to where he is sitting? Pode indicar onde que ele está sentado. Ali. Uh, there. Okay. Your Honor, if the record reflects like the witness pointing towards the defendant. Pode reflect that she was pointing in the direction of the defendant. Okay. Ma'am, could you tell us what is he wearing? Just Pode describe what he's wearing. Como está vestido? O que, que ele está usando? Ele está com um terno cinza, é, cinza escuro, uma blusa branca, uma gravata cinza claro com cinza escuro, se não me engano. He's wearing a, a suit, a dark gray suit, and a white shirt with a striped tie. Your Honor, if the record can reflect the witness Você identifying the defendant. Que a testemunha Sim. identificou. Thank you. Sim. Do you recall the first day you went to clean um, the defendant's home? O senhor se lembra da primeira, do primeiro dia que a senhora foi limpar a casa do Rio? 4 de junho de 2013. June 4th of 2013. Do you recall what day that was? Se lembra que dia na semana que era? Terça-feira. Tuesday. And do you recall the next time that you cleaned his house after June 4, 2013? Yes, June 11th of 2013. Okay. And what day of the week was that? Tuesday. Okay. And the following Tuesday, June 18th of 2013, do you recall whether you cleaned the defendant's home on that day. E a terça-feira seguinte, 18 de junho de 2013, a senhora se lembra se, lim se limpava a casa do rei naquele dia? Sim. Yes. And what time did you, um, what time did you go to his home on that day? E que horas que você foi para casa dele naquele dia? Em torno de 8 horas a 8 e 15 da manhã no máximo. Around 8 o'clock at the latest 8.15. And how did you get to his home? Como foi que você chegou lá na casa dele? Eu fui de carro. I went by car. And uh, whose car was that? E de quem era o carro? Era da Carla. It was Carla's. Fomos nós duas. The two of us went. Okay. Who was driving? Quem estava dirigindo? A Carla. Carla. And do you know where she parked? Você sabe onde ela estacionou? Ela estacionou em frente a... Garagem. She parked in front of the garage in the driveway. And after she parked, did you go somewhere? E depois dela estacionar, você foi para algum, alguma parte? Entramos na casa pela garagem. We went into the house through the garage. Okay. And what part of the house did you enter? 
E em que parte da casa que você entrou? Nós entramos pela garagem que dava acesso a, a um corredor que já dava acesso à cozinha. We went in through the garage, which gave us access to a hallway, which went into the kitchen. Okay. And from, <coughs> excuse me, from the kitchen, did you go somewhere else in the home? E da cozinha, você, você foi para alguma outra parte da casa? Sim, da cozinha eu desci para o basement. Yes, from the kitchen I went down to the basement. Okay. Had you been in the basement before assim, that day? Já esteve no basement antes desse dia? Sim. Yes. And on the prior occasions that you had gone to the defendant's home, had you cleaned the basement area? E nas outras vezes que a senhora teve ido, tinha ido para a casa do rei, você tinha feito limpeza no, no, no basement? Sim. Yes. On those prior occasions, when you went into the basement area, did you notice anything? Naquelas outras vezes, quando a senhora foi para a área do basement, a senhora notou alguma coisa? Havia, no basement, às vezes que eu limpei, havia um cheiro de maconha. There was, uh, in, in the basement, when I, I was cleaning, there was the smell of marijuana. On, on June 18th, uh, well, let me ask you this. On June 4th and June 11th, when you had gone to the basement, did you smell marijuana? In 18 de junho, deixa eu perguntar o seguinte. Em 4 de junho e em 11 de junho, quando você foi para o basement, você tinha, se, sentiu cheiro de mar, maconha? Sim. Yes. And on the 18th of June, when you went to the basement, did you smell marijuana? E no dia 18 de junho, quando você foi para o basement, você sentiu cheiro de maconha? Sim. Yes. And was it any different than what you had smelled on the prior two times, the 4th and the 11th? Diferente das outras duas vezes que você tinha sentido aquele cheiro no dia 4, dia 11? Sim, dessa vez foi um pouco mais forte. Yes, this time it was somewhat stronger. Okay. Now, on any of those occasions, those prior, uh, the 4th, the 11th, the 18th, did you ever see any marijuana in the area of the basement? Naquelas outras vezes que você esteve lá no 4, 11, 18, você tinha visto maconha lá no basement? Houve uma vez que eu vi um pouco, mas no dia 18 de junho é, haviam mais vestígios. There had been a time when I saw a little, but on the 18th there was more of it. Okay. And when you say there was more of it, where did you see it? Quando eu disse que tinha mais vestígios, aonde foi que você viu aquilo? Na pedra, é, uma pedra com se fosse uma bancada é, de uma parte de, da cozinha do basement. On a stone, it's like it was a bench in the kitchen area of the basement. Do you know what a, uh, a counter is? A senhora sabe o que é balcão? Yeah, balcão. Yes, counter. Okay. Was there a counter in the in the basement? Tinha balcão. Sim. Aí. Yes. And did you see any marijuana on that counter? E a senhora enxergou alguma coisa de maconha em cima daquele balcão? Sim, em cima do balcão. Yes. Essa pedra seria o balcão. On top of the counter, the stone would be the counter. And how big uh, or how much marijuana did you see on the counter on June 18th? E qual o tamanho, quanta quantidade de maconha que você viu aí no balcão no dia 18? Bastante. Hum. A good uma quantidade amount. considerável. A considerable amount. Okay, can you just... Podemos nos aproximar? Podemos. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Um,
Ladies and gentlemen, as I've told, told you in the past, the defendant is not charged uh, with committing any crime, um, including unlawful uh, possession of marijuana, um, other than the charges contained in the indictments that are before you. Um, uh, testimony uh, by a witness with respect to um, uh, an, uh, any substance that may have been seen in the defendant's residence uh, cannot be considered by you as any proof that the defendant has a propensity to commit any of the crimes charged or as evidence of uh, bad character. Uh, to the extent you credit that evidence, you may consider it. Uh, to the extent you may find it uh, relevant uh, on the issue of the relationship uh, between uh, Mr. Hernandez and Mr. Alloyd. Uh, you may not consider it for any other purpose whatsoever. Specifically, you cannot use it uh, to conclude if this witness or any other witness may have seen a substance in, at the defendant's uh, residence. Uh, he must have committed the crimes with which he is charged. He may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Ma'am, could you just describe how much marijuana you saw on the counter on June 18th? of uh, 2013. Era estava espalhado no balcão. É, não sei a quantidade certa, mas era visível naquele balcão. It was spread out along the counter and I, I can't say how much there was in quantity, but it, it was con considerable. It was visible. O cheiro era muito forte. And the, the scent was very strong. Now, when you went down um, to the basement, um, did you begin to, uh, on the 18th, did you begin to clean the basement? Agora, quando a senhora desceu lá no basement, em 18, a senhora começou a limpar lá no basement? Sim. Eu... Entrei e fui primeiro ao banheiro do basement para recolher o lixo de lá. Eu entrei, eu desci ao basement primeiro para começar a organizar para que eu e a Carla pudéssemos começar a limpar todo o basement. Yes, I went first into the bathroom to gather up all the trash and start to organize everything so that uh, we would be able to clean in the basement. Okay. Now, after you had uh, gotten down to the basement and begun to clean, at some point did you hear somebody else in the basement? Depois que você chegou lá no basement e começou a limpar, você chegou numa altura que escutou mais alguém lá no basement? Sim. Yes. And who was that? E quem era? Era o Aaron Hernandez. It was uh, Aaron Hernandez. Okay. And where was he when you were in the basement? E ele estava onde quando você estava no basement? Ele estava próximo à entrada do, do cinema. He was next to the entry to the theater. Okay. And did you see him doing something in that area? E você não enxergou fazendo alguma coisa naquela área? Sim. Yes. What did you see him doing? O que foi que você o enxergou fazendo? Ele estava mexendo na câmera de segurança do, do teto. He was uh, touching the, the security camera in, in the ceiling. Okay. And the security camera in the ceiling, um, how long did you see him doing that? E a câmera de, de segurança do teto, quanto tempo que você o viu fazendo isso? Cerca de três a cinco minutos around uh, three to five minutes. And during that time, what were you doing? E durante este tempo, este prazo, o que estava fazendo você? Eu saí do banheiro, fui até o quarto, esse banheiro dava acesso a esse quarto, e fui organizando para dar tempo de, dele terminar, e... Mas como ele demorou alguns minutos consideráveis e eu precisava, eu precisava começar o trabalho, então eu fiz um barulho para que ele percebesse que eu estava ali. I left the bathroom to start in, in the bedroom. The, the, the bathroom went into the, to the bedroom there. 
and after a, a while, since he was taking some time there, I made a noise so that I, that he would, under, he would hear that I was there. Okay. And what happened after you made a noise? What did he do? Depois que você fez algum barulho para que ele escutasse. Ele saiu do basement. He left the basement. Okay. And <coughs> did you can? Um, did you continue to clean the basement after that? Limpando o basement depois disso? Sim. Yes. And how much, uh, how much time did you spend in the basement after that? E quanto tempo que você ficou no basement depois disso? Cerca de uma hora. Around an hour. Okay. And after, after that hour, did you go somewhere else in the home? E depois daquela hora, você passou para outra parte daquela casa? Sim. Yes. Did you see... Um, uh, Aaron Hernandez again in the home that day. Você o enxergou Aaron Hernandez em, na casa naquele dia mais? Não. No. Were there any other people that you saw in the home on that day? Tinha outras pessoas que você viu na casa naquele dia? Sim. Yes. And how many other people? Quantas outras pessoas? Três pessoas que eu eu vi ao todo. Three people that I saw all together. And were those men or women or both? <coughs> both. Okay. How many men, how many women? Quantos homens, quantos mulheres? Dois homens e uma mulher, a esposa dele. Two men and one woman, his wife. Okay. When you say his wife, uh, did you know um, a woman by the name of uh, Shayana? Quando você disse a esposa dele, você conhecia uma, uma mulher que se chamava Shayana? Sim. Yes. Okay. Was she there on that day? Ela esteve lá naquele dia? Sim. Yes. At some point, did you hear her um, ask or say something about moving a car? Na alguma altura, você escutou ela falar alguma coisa sobre a, a, alguma coisa de tirar um carro? Sim, ela pediu a Carla que movesse o carro. Yes. She asked Carla to move the car. Okay. And, and, if I could just follow that up, Your Honor. Down, so when, when you heard her say, or when, that, when she said that, were you present? Did you hear it with your own ears? Quando ela disse, você estava presente, você escutou com seus próprios ouvidos? Sim. Yes. Okay. Same objection, Your Honor. Objections have a role. After you heard her say that to Carla, did you see Carla go somewhere? Depois de você ouvir ela... Dizer isso para a Carla, você viu a Carla ir para algum canto? A Carla é, me avisou que iria te tirar o carro e eu fiquei Carla, continuando o trabalho. Carla told me that she oh, okay. okay. asked what anyone said no, to you. Não disse o did, que did, ela did, falou. Did you see Carla go somewhere? Você viu Carla Just ir yes para no. algum lugar, sim ou não? Sim. Yes. Where did you see her go? Para onde você viu ela ir? Vi a Carla... É, descer a escada para ir para fora. I saw Carla go down the stairs to go outside. Okay. And um, after she went downstairs to go outside, did she come back at some, uh, some point after that? E depois dela descer a escada para ir lá fora, depois de algum prazo, ela voltou? Tipo, Sim. Yes. How long after Quanto she went downstairs and went outside? Quanto tempo depois dela descer na escada e ir fora? Desculpe, eu não me lembro muito bem desse detalhe. Sorry, I, I don't remember that detail very well. Okay, that's, that's fine. Um, não, tudo bem. Sometime later, uh, uh, after you saw Carla go downstairs and go outside, uh, later in that day, well, let me ask you this, how long did you um, work that day at the defendant's home? Depois, quanto tempo, bem, deixa eu perguntar, quanto tempo mais que você ficou trabalhando na casa do, do rei? Até o fim da tarde, por volta de 5 horas da tarde. Until the end of the afternoon, around 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. And sometime prior to finishing work that day, did you see Shayana? E, em alguma altura, antes de terminar o trabalho naquele dia, você enxergou a Shayana? Sim. Yes. Okay. And did you see her doing anything? Você a viu fazendo alguma coisa? Sim. What, what yes. Did you, 
What did you see her doing? O que foi que você viu ela fazendo? Eu a vi no telefone. I saw her on the telephone. Did you see what she was, uh, how she was behaving while she was on the telephone? Você notou o comportamento dela enquanto ela estava no telefone? Ela parecia estar nervosa e chorava enquanto ela olhava a porta na parte de vidro, olhava lá fora alguma movimentação. She seemed to be nervous. She was crying. She was looking towards the door, the glass door, at, at something outside. Okay. And how long did you see her behaving in that way? E por quanto tempo você viu ela se comportando desta maneira? Acredito que em torno de 10 minutos que eu tenha visto. I believe it was around 10 minutes that I saw her okay. like that. And then later, um, some time after that, did you leave the home? E depois, um pouco depois disso, você foi embora daquela casa? Sim, a Graziele chegou para nos buscar, para verificar como foi a limpeza. E ela percebeu que havia policiais lá de fora. Nós não sabíamos o que estava acontecendo. Então... Assim finalizamos o trabalho, viemos embora. Todas juntas saímos de lá. Yes, Graciele came after us there, and she checked to see how the cleaning had gone during the day, and then she saw we saw that there were police outside. We didn't know what was going on, and we finalized everything for for the day, and we left. Ma'am, I'm just going to place what was marked 19B on, uh, on this floor. I'm going to ask you if you recognize what it is. Yes. What do you recognize that to be? Reconhece aquilo como que? Ali é o, é, é o basement. There it's the, uh, the, the basement. And in this photograph, uh, when you described how you observed the defendant, um, um, over near a camera, doing something with a camera, do you see that camera in this photograph? E quando você descreveu, você falou sobre o Rio fazendo alguma coisa com a câmera, você enxerga a câmera nesta fotografia? Sim. Yes. Can you just point that out, please? Pode indicar, por favor. À direita do... Na, ao, é, no alto à direita da, da TV. It's to the right, it's above and to the right of the TV. Se você pode ir para lá e colocar o indicar com o dedo. Está indicando logo aqui? Just if you would um, describe what you saw the defendant doing in that area. Objection. Yes, the answer. Descrever o que você enxergou o rio fazendo naquela área. Ele mexia com as mãos por um tempo de 3 a 5 minutos. Aquela, 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 aquela câmera. He was using his hands for from 3 to 5 minutes up on, on that camera. In How long after you said you made a noise did you see him stop? E quanto tempo depois que você disse que fez um barulho, quanto tempo demorou para ele parar? Não demorou, imediatamente ele parou. He didn't take any time. He stopped immediately. Thank you, man. Nothing for you.
Good morning. Bom dia. Bom dia. Good morning. Good afternoon. Or, boa tarde. Good afternoon. Um, Ma'am, you've testified about observations you made on June 18th, 2013. Is that right? Senhora, a senhora testemunhou sobre observações que a senhora fez em 18 de junho. Está certo? Sim. Yes. And June 18th was just the third day that you had been to Aaron and Cheyenne's home. Is that right? O 18 de junho era o terceiro dia que você tinha passado na casa de Aaron e Hernandez. Sim. Yes. And in fact, on June 18th, that was the first day you'd ever seen Mr. Hernandez in the home, wasn't it? E em 18 de junho, esta foi a primeira vez que você enxergou o Sr. Hernandez na casa dele, não foi? Sim. Yes. And um, you had just begun working for Grazi, correct? Você tinha começado a trabalhar pela Grazi. Correto? Sim. Yes. You'd only been in this country for about three months at that time? Naquela altura, só esteve neste país por uns três meses. Sim. Yes. And your schedule with Grazi was every Tuesday, wasn't it? E seu programação, sua programação com a Grazi era cada terça-feira, não foi? Naquela casa, sim. At that house, yes. And at that house, every Tuesday, you went once a week, didn't you? E naquela casa, cada terça, você foi uma vez na semana, não foi? Sim. Yes. And Tuesday, June 18th, was a normal, regular cleaning day at that house, wasn't it? E terça, 18 de junho, era um dia normal de limpeza naquela casa, não foi? Sim. Yes. Now, you talked about your observations when you were in the basement, didn't you? Agora, a senhora falou sobre suas observações de quando a senhora esteve no basement, não foi? Sim. Yes. And you described observing Mr. Hernandez uh, touching or the uh, surveillance camera in the ceiling, didn't you? E a senhora descreveu o senhor Hernandez uh, tocando a câmera de Vigilância aí no teto, não foi? Sim. Yes. And you um, saw this because you were in the bathroom in the basement, weren't you? E a senhora enxergou isso porque a senhora esteve no banheiro do basement, não foi? Sim. Yes. Banheiro e quarto. Sorry. The bathroom and the bedroom. There's no question. Não tem pergunta. No, she checks last. Actually, but initially, yes. I'm placing on the display of exhibit D for identification. This is a plan of Mr. Hernandez's home. Do you recognize it? It's uma planilha da casa do Sr. Hernandez. Você a reconhece? Sim. Yes. And the bathroom is here. E o banheiro isn't está it? aqui, né? Sim. Yes. And the camera you just pointed out for Mr. Macaulay is here. E a câmera que você indicou para o senhor. Sim. Aqui, né? Yes. And you heard Mr. Hernandez come to the basement, didn't you? E você escutou o senhor Hernandez chegando no basement, não foi? Sim, escutei um barulho. Yes, I heard a noise. And then you saw him touching the camera. Aí você viu ele tocando na câmera. Sim. Yes. And you were in the bathroom. E você esteve no banheiro. Também. Also. Um, when you saw Mr. Hernandez, did he have a ladder? Quando você enxergou o Sr. Hernandez, ele estava com a escadinha. Desculpe, não me lembro. Sorry, I, I can't, I don't recall. Uh, he didn't have any tools with him, did he? Ele não tinha ferramentas junto, tinha? 
Não que eu percebesse. Not that I saw. And you made these observations from the bathroom. You estimate that he touched the camera for three to five minutes. Is that right? E você fez as observações desde o banheiro e você calcula que ele tocou na câmera de três a cinco minutos, tá certo? Que eu vi, se quando eu comecei a observar, foi esse tempo. That I saw from when I started to observe, it was about that time. Did you observe him the whole time, three to five minutes? Você observou o tempo todo, dos três a cinco minutos? Eu observei a princípio quando do banheiro, da porta do banheiro, porque eu iria sair do banheiro e eu observei. Observei um pouco para ver o que ele estava fazendo e voltei e pelo banheiro você consegue ir para um outro quarto, para um, para um quarto. E observei ele continuou mexendo. Uh, I saw I just, him. I, yeah, I'm just asking, was there something that she didn't understand about that question? It was a long answer to a short. On the objection on it, we really don't know until we refer to translation. Well, Your Honor, we're going to sit. I'm going to ask you to ask the question again. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you put a fazer a pergunta de novo? Did you watch him for the entire three to five minutes you described? A and senhora, when a question can be answered yes or no, you should just answer it yes or no. Quando eu pergunto só, pode ser respondido sim ou não, não, você pode responder sim ou não. Você ou enxergou o tempo todo dos três a cinco minutos? Não. Não. And you, um, eventually, uh, you said you made a noise, um, didn't you? Em tempo, você disse que fez um barulho. Não foi? Sim. Yes. And um, you made a noise because you felt nervous? E você fez um barulho porque você se sentiu nervosa? Não. Não. Why did you make a noise? Por que que fez o barulho? Fiz o barulho porque ele já ele estava já há um tempo considerável, eu precisava começar a limpeza para que ele percebesse que eu estava ali. So you weren't I nervous? Me. I made the noise because he had been there for some time and I wanted him to know I was there so that I could finish doing my work and cleaning. So you weren't nervous? Então, você não estava nervosa. A princípio, eu fiquei um pouco é, ansiosa porque, por ele ser uma pessoa famosa. I'm going to again instruct you if the question can be yes or no, if the answer is yes or no, if you don't recall, if you don't understand the question, if you don't understand the question, I'll be happy to rephrase it, Your Honor. Okay. Did you make the noise because you were nervous? Você fez o barulho porque esteve nervosa? Não. No. Do you remember testifying before the grand jury in this case? Você se lembra de ter testemunhado perante o grande júri neste processo? Sim. Yes. You remember being called in front of some people and Você taking an oath like you did today? Frente de algumas pessoas e prestando juramento como você fez hoje. Sim. Yes. And there was an interpreter there for you, a Portuguese interpreter that day as Vim well, wasn't there? Vim ter de português para você naquele dia também. Sim. Yes. And do you remember you were asked a question at some point? Ms. Procolis, sorry, page 51, lines 19 through 24. You were asked a question, and at some point, did you do something that alerted Mr. Hernandez that you were there? Answer, yes. Since it was taking a while and he hadn't seen me, I started getting nervous because of that. So I went from the bathroom to the bedroom, which was a smaller distance from where I was, and made some noise so he would see that I was there. That finishes, Mr. McCauley, on page 52, line 1. Did you hear that testimony, ma'am? I just read. Your Honor, may the interpreter have access to that yes. written portion? Be happy to, Your Honor. Portion? Thank you, Your Honor. It's the same lines I just told Mr. McCauley begins here. Question? And it finishes here. E, em alguma altura, você fez alguma coisa que alertou o Sr. Hernandez que você esteve lá? 
Sim. Como eu estava levando um tempo e ele não me, tinha me visto, uhum. eu comecei a ficar nervosa por causa disso. Então, eu fui do banheiro para o quarto, que era uma distância menor do que eu era, do que eu estava, e eu fiz algum barulho para que ele uh, notava que eu estava ali. Sim, sí, é? Yeah. Yeah. Uhum. Uhum. You now remember testifying to the grand jury that you were nervous. Agora você lembra de ter testemunhado para o grande jurado que você estava nervosa? Sim. Yes. You testified that after you made the noise, uh, Mr. Hernandez left. Isn't that right? Você testemunhou que depois que você fez o barulho, o senhor Hernandez saiu. Sim. Yes. Um, and with regard to him touching the camera in the ceiling, you don't know what he was doing, do you? E no tocante, isso dele mexer com a câmera no teto, você não sabe o que ele estava fazendo, sabe? Não. Não. And you stated that you made the noise and he left, but he could have left for another reason, couldn't he? Você sustain. How do you know he left because you made the noise? Como é que você sabe que ele foi embora porque você fez o barulho? Eu disse que testimony by this witness as to um, uh, what may have motivated someone else. Did you see the camera after Mr. Hernandez left? Você viu a câmera antes do Sr. Hernandez ir embora? Naquele mesmo dia? On that same day? Yes, after he é, left sim, the basement. Let me rephrase that for the interpreter. The basement. Deixa after he left the novo. basement, did you see the camera? Depois dele sair do basement, você viu a câmera? Eu não parei para ficar observando a câmera. I didn't stop to start observing the, the camera. But you stopped to observe Mr. Hernandez. Mas você parou para observar o Sr. Hernandez? Alguns minutos, sim. So, for some minutes, yes. So you never looked at the camera again that day? Não colheu mais para a câmera de novo naquele dia? Não me lembro. I don't remember. But you stayed in the basement for about an hour cleaning it. Mas ficou no basement por volta de uma hora fazendo limpeza. Sim. Yes. Did you pick up any broken glass around the camera? Você apanhou algum vidro quebrado, cascalhos aí para perto da câmera? Pick up any broken plastic around the camera? Alguma coisa de plástico quebrado por volta da câmera? Não. Não. Nothing further, Your Honor. Mais nada, meritíssimo. So, rapidinho. Ma'am, could you explain why you were nervous? A senhora pode explicar por que ficou nervosa? Sim, eu fiquei nervosa porque os minutos que eu precisei ficar parada porque ele estava ali atrasaria o meu serviço. Por isso eu falei que eu estava nervosa a princípio. Não nervosa com ele, mas nervosa do meu trabalho ficar em atraso porque a casa dele é enorme, então nós temos, tínhamos tempo, prazo para terminar o serviço. O meu nervosismo foi por isso. I was nervous because of the considerable minutes that he was there. And the time he was there, I was, my, my work was stopped and my work was becoming delayed. And I wasn't nervous because he was there so much as that his house is, is enormous and I, we didn't want to become delayed in finishing our work that day. Thank you. Nothing further. Wait, Nothing further. Thank you, Ms. <laughs> Let me uh, remind or let me tell you that, instruct you that to the extent any of you uh, may understand the language of uh, 
this witness or any other witness who previously testified, um, uh, the evidence in this case is only uh, the translation uh, to the extent any of you may uh, uh, um, have, uh, uh, have any different view. It is the translation uh, that is evidence in this case and not um, any foreign language that may be spoken by a witness. Thank you. Uh, Trooper David Mackin. Testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. I do. You see? Governor. Hey, Ankwai. Name. Sir, state your name for the record, please. My name is David R. Mackin, M A C K I N. You, sir, are a state trooper? <clears throat> yes, I am. How long have you been a state trooper? I've been a state trooper for just over 20 years. Are you married, sir? Yes, I am. Any children? Yes. Where did you grow up? Uh, Salem, Massachusetts. Did you graduate from high school there? Yes. And after high school, what did you do? I uh, joined the Marine Corps. And what did you do for the Marine Corps? Uh, I was a military police officer. How long did you do that? Uh, four years. And after graduating, or uh, actually <coughs> being discharged from the military, uh, did you take an exam to become a state trooper? Yes, I did. When was that? Uh, approximately 1992. And when did you actually become a state trooper? 1994. What was your job, your first job within the state police? I was a uh, road trooper. And just briefly describe what that was? Uh, basically highway patrol. Uh, and how long did you end up uh, working on the road? <clears throat> a little bit over seven years. Um, after being on the road, what was your next job with the state police? Uh, with crime scene services. Describe what that is, please. Uh, in crime scene services, we respond to scenes. Uh, we record scenes with uh, photos, videos, diagrams. Uh, we can process scenes. We also do a lot of uh, photography for other uh, units in the state police, the fire marshal's office, um, accident reconstruction. We also will do uh, photos for detectives and for the medical examiner's office. And that's what that department is <clears throat> today. Was it that way back in 2002? Yes. Um, with regards to that particular role within the state police, did you have to get any special training when you entered that unit? Yes. What was that? Uh, well, there's pro I had approximately 16 weeks of training. During that time, we uh, trained with uh, senior troopers and outside agencies, uh, basically on fingerprints, uh, photography, videography, uh, diagrams, uh, uh, collection, uh, collection of evidence, uh, processing for fingerprints and collection of fingerprints. Um, in 2002, how was the state divided with regards to uh, crime scene services? Was it the whole state you covered? Uh, no, there's approximately uh, seven offices. And in 2002, were you assigned? Yes, I was. Where was that? I was assigned to the uh, Sudbury office. <clears throat> and how long did you work out of Sudbury? I was in Sudbury for approximately a year and a half. Okay, and where did you go after that? At that time, I was able to transfer down to uh, Middleborough which is now in uh, Lakeville. Same uh, sort of division of the state? Yes. And where does that cover? Uh, <clears throat> well, as I said, it's now the Lakeville office. Uh, we basically cover from, uh, parts of Norfolk County, Bristol County, Plymouth County, Cape and the Islands. How many people work out of that office within the state police crime scene services? Uh, well, we are uh, mixed along with the Bourne office. Uh, covering that whole area, and there is 12 people. Within crime scene services, do you have a particular specialty? Yes, I do. And what is that? Uh, fingerprints. <clears throat> Specifically with regards to fingerprints, when did you first get trained in fingerprints? Uh, when I first came into the unit. Okay, so that was back in 2002? <clears throat> yes. How many fingerprint cases have you done, cases involving fingerprints? Since then? Since 2002. Uh, hard to say, hundreds. Um, and 
in general terms, sort of just say when you say fingerprints, what are your responsibilities in general terms with regards to fingerprints? Uh, with regards to, uh, regard to fingerprints, uh, as I said, we'll respond to scenes and uh, we will process looking for fingerprints. Uh, if we find any, we collect them, we'll bring them back, and we will make uh, examinations of the prints. And with regards to those particular <clears throat> sort of pieces within fingerprints, how long have you been certified to do each of those pieces? Since 2002. Since 2002, have you received specific training with regards to fingerprints? Yes, I have. And could you tell the jury what that is? Uh, well, we have continual training. Uh, used to be quarterly training. Now it's uh, semi-annual. Uh, we also have uh, proficiency tests every year. You also have to take one before you go out on the road to uh, work on fingerprints. Uh, we also, I've also been through numerous uh, trainings with outside agencies, uh, such as the science of fingerprints, uh, friction radiology, uh, palm, palm prints, and numerous others. And just so we're clear, when we talk about fingerprints, is that a colloquialism that includes more than just fingers? No. Fingerprints are just fingerprints. Uh, there is friction ridge skin, which forms the fingerprints. You also have the friction ridge skin on your palms down to your wrist bracelet and also on your feet from your toes to your heel. Is there a good generic term that refers to sort of all of those categories at once? Uh, just friction ridge. Okay. So with regards to friction ridge training then, yes. uh, um, did you, have you been certified all the way since 2002? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, and have you ever instructed any others with regards to fingerprints, or excuse me, friction ridge details? Yes, I have. And when was that? Uh, it's been a, over a few years. What kinds of um, people do you instruct? I've instructed uh, local detectives. I've instructed uh, numerous local police officers or police uh, forces, uh, all the way down to Boy Scouts. And uh, with regards to uh, Friction Ridge detail again, have you ever <coughs> testified as an expert in court with regards to those subject areas? Yes, I have. And how many times have you done that? Uh, approximately 75. How many of those occasions have been in the Superior Courts of Massachusetts? In the Superior Courts of Massachusetts, probably uh, approximately 50. And how many times here in Bristol County Superior Court? Uh, approximately 15 to 20. Have you ever testified in federal court? Yes, I have. <coughs> is, the, is the crime scene services laboratory that you work for in any way certified with regards to fingerprints? Uh, we are an accredited lab. What does that mean? Uh, the uh, ASCLAD, which is the American Society of Crime, Le crime Lab Directors, has come in. Uh, they do a lot of, uh, they go through a lot of our work, take a look at the techniques we're using, uh, the equipment we're using, make sure that everything is uh, being done the correct way. Okay. Um, we've been using the term, but maybe we could kind of define it. What is a friction ridge detail? Uh, friction ridge detail, uh, basically, as I was saying before, on your hands, you have uh, ridges that are raised that have pores on those. Uh, that's the friction ridges, and in between the uh, friction ridges, you have furrows, which would be the low parts of the uh, hand. Okay. Uh, um, so the, what's the part between the ridges called? Furrows. Um, and which parts of the hands can be used um, for substantial identification? That would be the friction ridges, the raised parts. So where do those occur on someone's hand? Uh, they're, as I said, from the wrist bracelet all the way up to the fingertips. Do they occur on the back side of the hand at all? No, they do not. How long have uh, fingerprints or friction ridge details been used to identify individuals? Uh, they seem to, uh, they appear to go back as far as 221 BC when uh, Chinese, uh, the Chinese were using to mark uh, pottery with fingerprints as a uh, source of identification. Uh, in America, they, in 1902, the New York uh, Civil Service started using fingerprints to identify people and make sure that uh, the people that were taking the test were the ones that were supposed to be taking tests. And in uh, 1903, 
uh, the New York uh, prison service uh, prisons started uh, taking fingerprints of all their uh, subjects. And in that time, has there ever been two people who have had the same friction ridge detail on their hand? No. And does an individual um, have the same <clears throat> detail throughout their life on their hand? Yes, they do. Does it change over the course of someone's life? Not unless it's been uh, cut or uh, somebody has done something to try to change it. And with regards to fingerprint analysis itself or friction ridge detail analysis itself, um, what is it that makes it particularly useful for identification? Uh, friction ridge is uh, unique and it's persistent. What is that? What do those two terms mean? The uniqueness is that, as I said, nobody has been found to have the same fingerprints uh, ever. And persistence is, as I said, if you uh, were to get a paper cut or whatever, we'll change the ridges for a short time, it'll come back. You can even, uh, if you have like a light burn cooking, the ridges will tend to uh, disappear, but they will uh, reappear. In, in fingerprint analysis, where do you actually get these, these prints? Where do they come from? I'm not sure if I understand. Okay. Um, are there certain systems that have uh, databases of, <clears throat> of uh, fingerprints and friction ridge detail? Yes, there are. Okay. What are those called? Uh, there's basically two systems. One is APHIS, which is the Automated Fingerprint Identification System. Uh, that's basically just for the state uh, that you're in. So the APHIS system we would be using would be for Massachusetts. There's also the Integrated Automated Fingerprint Identification System which is through the uh, federal government. So it uh, gives you basically the whole country. <clears throat> um, with regards to uh, an exemplar or uh, a major print card, what is that? <clears throat> an exemplar or a major print card is going to be a card that we uh, go out and retrieve. And uh, basically what we're doing is we're making a copy of the friction ridges uh, using printer's ink on a contrasting background, usually a white card. And the, the sort of the fingerprints or friction ridge detail taken from a scene, taken from uh, another location, what's the proper term for that? Uh, it's usually a, a latent print. And what is a latent print? A latent print is a uh, copy of the friction ridges. Uh, it's usually invisible to the naked eye, uh, and it's made by uh, latent prints are 98% perspiration, and as I said before, the friction ridges have pores on them, and that's where the uh, perspiration comes from. And what do you do to find latent <clears throat> prints? Uh, well, the first thing we'll do when we go to scene, we'll try to see if we do see anything. Uh, not very often, but you might see something, say, on a glass. <clears throat> uh, but what we will then do is uh, we'll process the items, uh, usually at a scene, what we'll do is we'll use powder, and what that does is that connects to the uh, latent print, and you can then uh, see it there at the scene. What are these latent prints usually made of? As I said, it's 98% perspiration. <clears throat> um, when, you, when you put the powder on them, yes. how does that work? What does the powder do? It just attaches to the, the uh, wetness. And do you then blow on the powder? How do you get the excess powder off? You just have a brush and you can uh, go back and forth or, or spin it. Um, is there also another method uh, sometimes referred to as the glue method? Yes, there is. What is that? Uh, usually with the uh, gluing method, what we're going to do, <clears throat> it's going to be evidence that we're going to take from the scene. Uh, the problem with using the powder is that, as I said, it's uh, perspiration, so you could actually damage it. It's not a permanent thing. Uh, so when we have um, items that we think are more important, we'll try to take them back to our lab. And we have a uh, large fuming tank. Uh, basically what the fuming tank does, uh, well, you put super glue in it, also has water. You'll uh, set it, it will, uh, the first thing it does is uh, humidifies the tank. So try to reactivate the perspiration. Uh, that makes up the latent prints. Uh, after that, the next uh, thing is that the cyanacrylate ester, basically super glue, will be heated up. It vaporizes, <clears throat> and there's uh, two fans inside, at least our fuming tank. It blows the uh, vaporized super glue around. 
which will then attach to uh, hopefully the uh, latent prints, the perspiration that's in there. And then the last uh, part of it is it has a couple of giant filters in it, and it sucks out the excess uh, vaporized fumes. How big is the glue tank that you use? The tank that we have is uh, larger than a refrigerator. We can fit a, I think the largest we've had is a king size uh, bed frame in. So how do you use the glue method on an automobile? Uh, on an automobile, <clears throat> it used to be you could just uh, try to make a tent. Now we actually have a tent that we use, a giant tent that fits inside, uh, the car fits inside of. Uh, and in this case, it actually has two heating tins that heats up the uh, cyanacrylate, well, we'll say the super glue, and it blows it around inside the tent. And How then, long? Excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, it can take up to about an hour, and then we will open up the sides to let it out because they don't have uh, fans inside it. Um, is there a particular thing that you need to do with regards to whether the windows are up or down on the car when you first get it? Uh, we will not touch the windows. Uh, we'll leave it just as it is. If the windows are down, <clears throat> we'll leave them down. Uh, as I said, it's 98% uh, perspiration latent, so if there's somebody had touched the window and you bring it up, chances are you're going to wipe it off anyway. Uh, if we are trying to process a car and all the windows are up, we'll open up the doors so that the fume can get inside also. Um, is there a method that involves dye? <clears throat> yes. Uh, after, well, from every step that we do, we're taking photographs if we do see any latent prints. Uh, and as we go, we're obviously trying to make the prints better and better if we have some. Uh, there's yellow dye stain that we can use. We use that after we've uh, super glued. Uh, so basically, you spray it on, you wash it off use an alternate light source uh, and you have to actually go inside a dark room with the alternate light source and it basically will glow. And what do you, so you've now got a glowing print, what do you do with that? <clears throat> Take pictures of it. Um, are there other ways to record latent prints other than photographing them? Uh, yeah, we have, uh, there's latent lifters, that's, uh, you always take photos first, uh, you don't want to take the chance of losing any of the quality of it, but uh, you basically have latent lifters that are a piece of plastic, half of it's sticky, half of it's not, it's clear, and what you'll do is you'll place the uh, sticky side over the latent, and you'll peel it off and close it, so therefore it's going to hold on to the print for you, you're not going to lose it. Trooper Mackin, when you have these, these latents in the <coughs> photograph or lifter preserved, um, what exactly are you looking for? Uh, we're looking for uh, sufficient quality and quantity of friction ridge to make comparisons. Is there any particular quality or quantity that needs to be there? Uh, just, there's not really a certain number. It's just uh, enough of uniqueness or that we can see patterns of that. Uh, obviously, if it's all smudges and that, it's not going to help us. What is the, the sort of highest level patterns that you're looking for? I don't really understand. So highest level is not really a term of art. Um, no. Uh, it, when you first look at uh, a particular latent, what are you looking for? Uh, we're looking for uh, friction ridge uh, to, to uh, determine if there is friction ridge. Uh, we're going to be looking for patterns is the uh, basic fingerprints. And there's uh, three basic pattern types. The, the basic pattern types, are those visible to the naked eye? Uh, once it's been processed, yes. Okay. And what are the basic pattern types? Uh, basic, pa basic pattern types are uh, loop patterns, which is actually where uh, the friction ridge comes from one side of the finger. It comes around, circles, and goes back out the same way that it came from. Uh, if the ridges are coming from the left and going out to the left, it's a left loop. If it's coming from the right and going back out to the right, it's a right loop. Uh, that 65% uh, of the population has uh, loop patterns. Uh, the next pattern is going to be a whirl pattern, which the basic whirl pattern kind of looks like a bullseye, so it's basically a, a circle. Uh, that's approximately 30% of the population. And then there's arches, and the basic arches 
uh, the ridges come from one side, they may lift up and continue across and exit. And that's about 5% of the population. Your Honor, may I have a trooper back and just draw those generally? So that's the you know a loop pattern. Can you all see that? Okay. You know, so the ridges are coming from one side of the finger and they come around, they recurve, and they exit back out the same side. So, so in this case this would be a left loop, a right loop would be just flip this over. Uh, <clears throat> then you've got your whirl pattern where the basic, as I said, got the best drawing out. Uh, looks like a bullseye. There can also be uh, world patterns that are basically two loops that make a circle. And then you've got, I'm not sure how far down you can see. Um, that's, that's a wall. And then you've got your arch patterns where the ridges can raise and then and lower and exit out the opposite side. Thank you very much. With regards to those particular patterns, can the same person have sort of each of those patterns on different fingers on the same hand? Yes. Okay. Um, when you first look at the, the fingerprints, is that kind of what you're looking for, for that overall pattern for a particular fingerprint? Yes. How do you know when you first look at a fingerprint what finger you're looking at? You don't. So um, with regards to sort of this top level of analysis, What's the first thing that you look at? Well, the first thing, as I said, you're looking at is going to be a pattern touch, which is level one. All right. And after level one, obviously, there's going to be a level two. What goes into that kind of analysis? Uh, level two is going to be the characteristics that are formed by uh, friction ridges. What are those? Uh, there's numerous. Uh, first, you have a ridge ending, <clears throat> which as it sounds, you have a ridge that's uh, flowing and then just comes to a stop. Uh, then you've got uh, short ridges or long ridges, which are basically a ridge that has an ending at each end, or a dot, which is basically just one section of friction ridge, usually has like a pore in it. It's basically the same width all the way around. Uh, there's bifurcations where, bless you, uh, bifurcations where you have a ridge that will divide into two, uh, two friction ridges uh, connected. Um, you have an enclosure, which is basically a ridge that uh, bifurcates into two ridges, and then I guess you could say another bifurcation from the other way where they connect. So uh, it's basically one ridge splits into two of them back into one. Uh, there's hooks. Uh, which is basically where you have a uh, bifurcation. One of the ridges just goes for a very short distance and stops. The particular details that you're, you're talking about now, um, are, can you see those <coughs> with the naked eye? Sometimes. Um, but your particular analysis, does it generally involve magnification? Yes, it does. How do you do that? Uh, well, <clears throat> there's, you know, one way you can do it is using magnifying glass. Uh, we can make comparisons uh, or, you know, look at them that way. Another way is also by, uh, we'll scan the prints or the latents and we can uh, look at them on a computer. Is there an even uh, sort of deeper level of detail that sometimes exists? Yes, there is. And what is that? Uh, level three. Uh, what's in the level three detail? Uh, level three detail is uh, going to be things like the ridge ridge uh, width and that. Ridges don't tend to stay one thickness, you know, so they can, uh, or even one shape, they can uh, get thicker, thinner. Uh, I've seen ones where there's almost like a triangle sticking out of the side. Uh, you also have pores. Pores aren't necessarily uh, going to be perf perfect circles. And uh, the end, uh, ridge endings, uh, you might have some that basically like square off like somebody cut it. They could be uh, rounded or they can even come to a uh, triangle. 
can, can every latent be compared at all three of the levels you described? No. Why not? Uh, depending on how people touch, uh, touch items and that, you're, ne you're never going to be able to always have this, you know, a perfect print. You know, uh, and also, as I said, it's, you know, it's perspiration, so they're not permanent, so there can be movement, too, so you could lose, you know, some of the uh, details that way. Is there a general, pardon the pun, but rule of thumb that um, how long a particular fingerprint will last? No. Um, is it possible that you have some detail, but not enough to make a match? Yes. How does that happen? Uh, as I said, you know, depending on how something is touched, or if uh, it's smudged because you know it's still in the latent stage, uh, you can lose. You can have some qu quantity where you can see some ridges, but you not, might not be able to see a lot of the uh, characteristics in it, uh, and you know it's just determined that it lacks quality and quantity to make a uh, comparison. When it lacks quality and quantity to make a comparison, can you still sometimes um, exclude people with it? Yes. And, and what's the distinction there when, when you say it lacks quality and quantity, how do you then go and exclude somebody? Well, if you, know, if you are able to uh, see a pattern type and the person that you're looking at doesn't have that pattern type, obviously, you know, they're out. Okay. So what does it take to actually make a match? Uh, to make a match... As I said, we're looking for a latent that has sufficient quality and quantity of friction ridge characteristics, and it could be a fairly small part, uh, depending on the uniqueness of the characteristics. And by making a match, you're referring to forming an opinion that there's a match. I'll, I'll clarify that, Judge. When you, when you speak about uh, making a match, uh, is this an absolute thing? Uh, no. Okay. So uh, you go through a certain methodology. Just describe sort of what you do in terms of an, an, a, a particular analysis in general. <clears throat> okay. We use a what's called the ACE-V methodology. Uh, the first part's going to be analyzing. And the analyzing, as I was describing before, we're going to look at a latent, determine whether or not we feel that there is sufficient quality and quantity to even make a comparison. Uh, we're also going to determine, you know, if we can see, you know, pattern types uh, and what characteristics we have. Uh, the second part is going to be comparing. Uh, so if we've determined that we do have sufficient quality and quantity to uh, make a comparison, uh, we're going to compare it to uh, known prints that have been uh, supplied to us. Or if we don't have any prints that have been supplied to us, we can enter the print into either APHIS or IAFIS and see if it comes back, uh, wait for it to come back with subjects, which we will then uh, compare against. Uh, the, when the APHIS system feeds you back people, yes. uh, what is it feeding you back? What specifically? Is it a card? Is it a, a set of numbers? What is it giving you? Well, it's the first thing it's going to show us, it's going to send us, well, it will send us numbers, but it's also going to send us a photo or a scan of the uh, fingerprint that it's saying it could possibly be. Okay. Uh, and with that, with the numbers that it gives you, we can actually go into the criminal justice identification system, enter that number, and bring up the uh, card so that we can make our own comparisons. <clears throat> and is that sufficient for a match? In other words, is that, is that just the fact that the ape has spit somebody out? In your professional opinion, with your experience, is that enough for a match? No. Enough. The question you may phrase it as, is it enough to form an opinion as to a match? Is it enough to form an opinion? Uh, no, it isn't. Okay. So what do you have to do at that point? Uh, with that, we have to do the same as we would do as if uh, somebody had just submitted uh, fingerprint cards with the latents. We have to go through the whole uh, ACE-V. Yeah, you may um, 
so they will leave it up to you. It makes sense if you're going to a new area, it's not too much. Or... I am going to a new area, Judge. Okay, why don't we Thank you. suspend it this time to remind us of the Well, rise from Germany.